Hey guys, can y'all hear me? Anything on it? Oh. Technical difficulties already. Okay, I'm doing this for all my girls on a budget who are just coming out of bad relationships, who don't have a lot of money. Are y'all here? Can y'all hear me? Who want to look up on a budget? So I went and did some thrift shopping. How y'all doing? Can y'all hear me? Oh God. Okay. I had the mic plugged up, but it came out, so. All right. So I've been getting all these inboxes. I, how do I, how do I, uh, I, I can't afford to go shopping. I don't, I don't have any money. I'm, I'm on a budget, but I want to date, but I don't have the type of money to go and get the wardrobe that I need to attract guys that are on a higher level. All I have is what I have. And, you know, the kind of clothes that I have doesn't work. And, you know, how do I get cute, classy clothes and I can't afford it? You know, I, I'm going to, I. I don't know you know this is the big problem so I said hmm I'm bored let me go thrift shopping today and when I got into the Goodwill this is Goodwill select by the way I was like perfect go shopping at thrift stores you know if you can't afford some good clothing or some cute classy clothes and you're stuck with a budget go to goodwill or any thrift store and you will find cute stuff okay so i'm going to show you all what i found just in my area i didn't even drive far okay so if you're going to go drive far to the really 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 nice neighborhoods you probably get better stuff but i got mostly 90 percent designer clothes let me show you what i got i'll hold up a goodwill bag so you know it's from goodwill okay oh all right that's not clothes Oh, something else. All right. So, I'm like, okay, I want to look cute, classy, preppy, like a, you know, like the suburban moms around my area. So, you know, I got to class it up a little bit. Um, so, I found this really cute stripe, like, t-shirt. And I think this is like $2 or something. This is perfect for wearing on, you know, with some slacks or some leggings or some jeans or a vest and some boots or something um, with some flat ballet flats this is really a classic piece especially if you're trying to build a classy wardrobe or a capsule wardrobe or a preppy wardrobe or something like that okay so you can look like wife material <laughs> um, let me show y'all what else that I found okay that wasn't I don't know if that was a designer brand but it was classy so I picked it up okay um this really cute vest i don't know if this is it says memory lane this really cute gray vest with this lace at the bottom can be paired with a t-shirt jeans and some heels or some slides ballet flats just for a really cute pull together classy look and this was like two dollars okay y'all remember that polo ralph lauren um sweater that I uh, got on sale that was originally $115 and then I got it for $20 at the um, on sale guess what I found another one at Goodwill for five dollars okay see another one another one like DJ Khaled said $115 sweater for five dollars at Goodwill okay Polo Ralph Lauren. So, what do y'all think? Y'all like it? Five dollars. Okay. I have more. Hold on. Um, okay. So, this is like a real bougie preppy brand, L.L. Bean. You know, it's like an Oxford um, shirt. It's like blue. You can wear this under the sweater with the collar out and a cute necklace. Um, you can wear this under like a long sweater cardigan with some riding boots and roll the sleeves up. It's just real preppy, right? 
Um, you can wear it with leggings and boots and a scarf for the winter. This shirt would probably cost you about seventy dollars, fifty to seventy dollars. Two, I mean, I think this was five dollars. Yeah, five dollars. Okay, so you're getting Polo LL Bean. I don't know what that other brand was, but they're probably you could probably buy them in department store. Okay, now check this out. Banana Republic. Okay, now check it out. It's one of those. Um, it's one of those ruffle shirts. So you can wear this with a sweater, a cart, a jacket, a skirt. It has like these little ruffles that go down, and it's kind of like a pinstripe. But you can wear it like with leggings, jeans, and some boots, um, or flat, so you can tuck it into a skirt or whatever. You know, five dollars. Okay. So. And I bought another black and white striped shirt because I have three of these. But see, I get them for different fits. Like the short sleeve one is for spring. This long sleeve one, this one's from Old Navy. And this is to wear, this is oversized. This is to wear with like some jeans or leggings uh, and a scarf when it's not super cold or, you know, it's long. So it comes down. So it covers your butt. Okay. So that was $2. Okay. See, I'm making a capsule wardrobe. A classy wardrobe that you can take pieces and mix and match and things like that black skirts black sh black pants whatever so this is the kind of stuff that you can get thrift shopping you don't have to spend your whole check okay now look at this now I know this is a name brand but it looks expensive okay look at this I think this is look at that you put a nice collar shirt under it or a cute necklace with it pair it with a skirt or some jeans or some slacks or whatever I don't know for the winter or the fall it's cute right two dollars maybe five I think it was five okay yes now look at this one I don't what, what brand is this this is like one of those cow necks this is not really name brand but it looks expensive because of the the buttons on the sleeve this is really a nice touch right here so it's a cow neck black shirt and it's kind of long and it's stretchy and it's, you can wear this with like jeans or a skirt and tuck it in for the winter but the buttons is why I bought it because this makes it look expensive right and everybody can use a black cute shirt right so that's one bag all right let's get to the more designer um, I got another Old Navy shirt to wear under like my little puffy vests um, and stuff like that for the fall. This is just a gray long sleeve tee that you can get. I think this was two dollars. So this is this is a basic, you know, that you can use under a lot of, of your clothing if you do layers. Okay, I found this Ralph Lauren Sport shirt. Look at. It. It's it was it wasn't wrinkled but it was it's been in the back. It has a little logo there, and it looks brand new. There's no you know wear and tear on it. So this would this probably cost you about uh close to ninety dollars if you bought it for real, you know, in the store. So it's just a black sweater. Okay, Ralph Lauren. Um. Okay, this is really cute. This is a navy blue. This is by Mac Studio. Have y'all heard of that brand? Mac Studio is a good brand. It's a lace uh, dress. And you can wear this with a jacket, a sweater. Um, you can wear it for spring. Uh, but it is a navy blue lace Mac Studio dress. You can dress it up or dress it down. It's, just, it's cute, right? I think that was like, I think the dresses are like nine dollars. I don't know, I could be wrong. But a Mac Studio dress is going to run you about fifty, fifty dollars, right, or more. Okay. Eh, I found this khaki, um, like jacket, cargo jacket or something. It's by Eddie Bauer. And this is a real expensive brand too. So this will probably cost you about $80 to $100 in the store. 
yeah pinterest is a is a really good place to go look to um build up your wardrobe it'll show you what pieces to get um so this and it has like this really cute lining this green stuff in it i don't know what that is um but yeah it's an eddie bauer and it's real thick and it's kind of stretchy too so you compare this like you can wear this with that blue dress and some boots or you can wear this with some jeans it's really cute you know um so that was um i think that was i don't know if it's five dollars or something like that okay so then i went into the slack section and i got some slacks by j crew now y'all know how j how expensive j crew is right it's like uh, almost the same as Maybe a little bit less than Ralph Lauren, but on that same level. So these are some like slacks that cut off like um, at the, it's, they're, they're not capris, but they're like those short slacks that you could wear sandals, boots, like short boots with or flats or something with and the back has pockets. So these would probably cost you about 180 to 100 dollars in the store got these for five dollars okay go good with that um that jacket so already look at all these brands look at all these brands okay um more banana republic banana republic okay this skirt is wool it's cute it's a mini skirt has little pockets fake pockets and then it zips in the back I got this for $7.99 okay you can put this some black tights on under this that black turtleneck shirt with the little cute buttons and some heels or some boots and bam you got an outfit you know cute date daytime outfit uh so you know go to Goodwill y'all y'all can find some good stuff and look Bam, look what I found. Some red kitten heels. Look, brand new. For $7.99. They're uh, Karen Scott. I don't know that. But look, you can wear this with some jeans, a black, that striped, striped shirt, and that Eddie Bauer, like khaki looking cargo uh, jacket, and maybe a cute scarf or whatever. I don't know. So, yeah. Look at that. Seven ninety nine. Okay. I also got. This is also by Banana Republic. Okay. I found another. Um, this is like a little. Uh, this is Banana Republic, and this is like. Um. This this is like really flowy looking. Uh. It could, I don't know. No, this is a tank, but it's really long. It's a long tank, so you can wear this with leggings or skinny jeans with like a jacket over it. So it would be a layered look. Um, this is also, it could be more for springtime or anything. But yeah, I got this for like $3.99 or something like that. If you're short, it can be a dress, but it has these little knots at the top. So, um, yeah so these are really nice most of these um you know the goodwill select they only take uh certain clothes that are in really good condition and it's just wow and they always have them um, cleaned and pressed before they put them out on the floor so if you're worrying about that it's, it's all good um Okay, the last thing I got was this really cute uh, black long flowy tank top that you can like wear under a jacket or something and the back looks like that. It's really cute. This looks like $2. So, I mean, you can't beat that, right? Can't beat it. Uh, what I spent was less than $100 on all of that stuff, okay? one to two pieces of those maybe one piece of the Ralph that whole sweater alone was worth 115 dollars the Ralph Lauren sweater right the Banana Republic stuff is very expensive the um the J Crew pants were very expensive um 
so I already got my money back way the Eddie Bauer jacket is expensive okay so this Mac studio dress you know so if you're looking to, to look cute and classy before you get the money this is where you go you know they already clean the clothes for you you don't have to worry about that and they only take stuff in really good condition so you know if you're if you're just urging to go on a shopping spree and you don't have no money but you want to look cute go to the thrift stores and resale shops and things like that because you can find some really cute like basics and classics in there and if also if you want to start a business okay if you if you always know I'm thinking about money you can actually go to Goodwill and shop the designer brands and then sell them on Trade Z, um, eBay, um, open a little online online thrift shop of designer clothes. You know, a lot of people do that for a living. They don't work for anyone. They go and scrounge Goodwill for designers, and then they go and sell the clothes online for way more. Okay, so. For example, if I wanted to sell this LL Bean shirt online, I'm going to get way more than I paid for it. So I'm going to make a profit off of it, you know. So say I paid $5 for this and I sell this for $20. Bam, there goes $15 in my pocket, right? Plus, because they're going to pay for shipping, okay? Say I want to sell this Ralph Lauren sweater online. At least, okay, I paid maybe $5 for this. I might can get $30 for it, maybe $20. I'm going to make a profit, you know. So, if you're not into wearing used clothes, you can start your online store and sell them, okay? So, business idea, you know. If you don't know what to do and you want to start a little online store or business or eBay or something like that, go designer clothes shopping and thrift shops and sell them online, okay? Um, so, yeah. I was going to do that as one of my businesses, because y'all know I've got a bunch of stuff that I do, but it's very time consuming um, because you have to go and look through the racks, but if you like that kind of stuff and you have a lot of time, oh, I didn't even know this was layered. Look, this shirt is layered. It's like white, like a white layer coming out of it, like it's double layered. Okay, that's nice. Okay, I didn't even notice that. So, bam, right? Um, and sometimes you find very expensive stuff in thrift shops that they don't know the worth of and you go online and it's worth a lot of money. Um, I found a lot of expensive stuff that was worth a lot of money at thrift shops before. A doll, I found a doll that was worth like, I paid $2 for it, it was worth $60. Um, I found a toy that had, you know, that's old. And vintage and it was worth like four hundred dollars my kids were playing with it I'm like ooh, save that save that because you know you can sell it when you get older so just keep your eyes open you know um, <clears throat> and so you know you spend all your you know you spend all your money on expensive clothes and now you're broke you know but if you go thrift shopping you have money left and you can go like to Marshall's or you know TJ Maxx too um, I went because I won't buy pajamas at a thrift store, okay? but I went and bought some pajamas at Marshall's and I got the Ralph Lauren like plaid Christmas pajamas and they have the little uh, the little thing right there and they were on sale for $29 and they came with the pants so these are good Christmas gifts too. Um, then I bought my husband something, y'all. You know, I, I bought my husband something, girl. Okay, I bought him a really nice sweater and a vest for his birthday. His birthday is after Thanksgiving. I only bought him stuff on his birthday. Um, is that all that was in there? No, I had one more thing in there. Oh, I bought a keychain. Um, by Betsy Johnson. So, this is really cute. I couldn't pass that up. It's like this really cute keychain charm by Betsy Johnson. It's like a rose. And it has like a locket. 
and it's just really cute, right? So you can put this on your purse, your keychain. It was normally uh, $18, and it's on 12, 12 bucks. It's cute. I bought it. It was a splurge, like impulse buy. Um. So one second, one second. I'm gonna tell them I'm live because they will be, be talking loud. Layla, I'm live. Sasha, I'm live. Thank you. Um. Okay. Yeah. What else did I get? I think that's all. So. I think I spent about an hour in Goodwill and I found all of that and they had more stuff that were that was really nice but they weren't in my size like they had really nice really 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 nice things but they had miss me jeans they had lucky brand they had like all these really nice brands but you know some of them of course were in different sizes so I couldn't get everything to show you guys but that is all the stuff that I found in my size so, you know, they had so much more. Um, I just wanted to show y'all that y'all can, you know, look cute. But I normally don't really shop at Goodwill, but I don't have anything against it. You know, I find a lot of cute stuff there from time to time. And I don't mind shopping at Goodwill because, you know, I feel like if you can get a designer brand for super cheap, that's probably, um, you know, going to save you at least... $80 you know why not the clothes that you um, the clothes that you buy if somebody already tried them on in the dressing room basically the same thing you know what I'm saying so I feel like there's nothing wrong with it and I don't mind it <laughs> so and I and I give a lot of my clothes to Goodwill and I give a lot of my clothes to like Plato's closet so it doesn't bother me <laughs> Um, and I also got like some salt and pepper shakers. I don't know. They were just looking at me. And I needed some because mine broke. I broke, I dropped one. But I got these for Thanksgiving. They're like pumpkin salt and pepper shakers. These were $1.99 for both of them. So, and they look brand new. Okay. <laughs> As well. So that was my little thrifty Goodwill haul. You can look good on a budget. You don't have to be using all of your money to try to look cute, you know. Um, if you don't live on an, um, a side of town where people have like wear a lot of name brands that they give away, go to that side of town and go to the thrift shop, you know. I remember one time I went to the thrift shop in like a really, really expensive old money side of town and they had real designer stuff in there like Escada, Versace and stuff like that in their Goodwill. I was like, what? Oh my God, really? So you got to go to those nice neighborhoods. I just went to my local one and this is what I found. The normal suburban, you know, polo, J. Crew kind of stuff. Uh, just depends on what area you live in is the, the type of brands you're probably going to find. Okay. Classy look video. Oh, okay. How do you look classy when you're young but looking, but good looking without looking too uptight? Um, well, I think, uh, oh, I bought some more stuff too. I think adding a little bit of jewelry and like fun jewelry to it that's what i'm getting ready to get into my charming charlie haul adding some fun jewelry colorful type or like cute colors that pop like some nice lipstick um fun nail colors you know will set your look off you know keep you from looking old ladyish like for example like Okay, I know I look old ladyish from the neck up, but I have on some black leggings and I have some riding boots and my cute, um, you know, like tote bag. And then I had uh, my, little, my little braid going on with my sunglasses, you know, edge it up, you know. That's what I say, and like cute jewelry. So I went to Charming Charlie. I got these tights 
black tights to wear under my skirts and stuff, mini skirts, whatever, because they had them on sale. Uh, and I got some jewelry to, to like make my boring outfit look a little bit more exciting. It's like imagine if I had this necklace on with this instead, would look so much better. This is cute, right? You can you can dress this up or dress it down. Wear it with jeans and that stripy shirt, and a pair of like cute flats, um, a little purse. So. <laughs> You know, you could. You, this is how you would make it look fun. Add some jewelry, you know, add some spice. Is that all I got? Oh, I got this cute bracelet too. At Carmen Charlie. Um, it looks like this. It's a gold with a pearl. This is cute, right? Um. So yeah, that's what I got there. And I got Layla and Sasha a gift. I got her some unicorn affirmation cards. This is just like positive statements that you read to yourself every day to make you understand that you're number one <laughs> and everything's okay and look at things positive. So I'm starting her off, you know, thinking positive. I got her these. She loves unicorns. And then I got Sasha, this little cute, I got this friend P, I mean, I said I got this friend P, I got this pen free. It smells like a lollipop scented pen and the grape flavor. So she's going to love this. Watch, I'm going to give it to them. They haven't even gotten it yet. Layla, Sasha, I got something for you. No, but I got a surprise for you. Look. A pen. Yes, it's a furry, fluffy pen that smells like lollipop and grape. Okay. <laughs> thank you. All right, go get Layla. Thank have a you. surprise for her. Layla, mom, can I show you? She acted like she don't care. She loves that thing. Actually, she lost her toy and she's crying because she can't find it. Layla, I got something for you. Yay. Look. What are these? Unicorn affirmation cards. What are affirmation cards? It's like, look, look on the back. You read them every day and they give you like a positive thing about yourself. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> open them up. And I also you stole my up. candy. You here, you can just I already ate those. Alright, that's it. I'll bring you candy I'll back. I search hard for that in that Halloween candy. I'll, I'll bring you good candy back. Okay, this look is not good. I am it. Listen, I'm, <laughs> I'm in my pajamas. Hello. All right. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> you had her pajama shirt tucked into her pajama. <laughs> I got the cards from Charming Charlie. Yes. Um. They were they were by the purple stuff and the unicorn stuff. You know how they have everything in colors schemes? I got that near the purple stuff. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Charming Charlie, I like that store. They have some cute stuff, but I can't really just go ham in there. I can't just like because a little bit some of that stuff is overpriced. <laughs> and it's like silly. Like I'm not paying eighteen dollars. For you know, a scarf, unless it's like designer, not no charm and Charlie. Okay, so that's cute. Um, how are you? Thank you. Someone says I look 18. I wish. <laughs> trying to read some of these questions and you know what the reason I put this haul on this channel uh, is because I wanted to show you guys that you know no matter how much money you have or how little money you have whatever you do you can make it work you know I can go shopping at Saks I can go shopping at Goodwill it don't matter I'm gonna make it work and I'm gonna still be happy with everything that I buy 
and I'm going to still profit off of everything that I buy. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to make it work for me. And that's, you know, that's what a lot of people don't understand. Um, I'm not, I probably get some trolls on here. Ooh, you shop at Goodwill. Ooh. And you know that they go there every week. <laughs> so, you know, the main ones talking are the main ones, you know, <laughs> like, right? You know, the main ones talking are the ones that are spending their rent money, you know, trying to look good and then sitting in the house with their lights off and some new shoes waiting at the bus stop okay so I don't do this because I have to I'm doing this to show you guys you know what I'm saying um I clean out my closet every three or four weeks and recycle everything anyway so you know it's nothing to me but I just wanted to show that anybody can look classy on any budget okay Yeah, I, I saw a lot of Forever 21 brand clothes in Goodwill as well as H&M, you know. I found a lot of Target brand clothes in, H in, in, in the Goodwill. So if you like H&M, if you like Target, if you like um, Forever 21, they got all that stuff in there too. I just didn't buy it because I wanted the, the designer classic brands. But they had it all, and they had some cute stuff too. They had lots of long, those, you know, those trenches that those Burberry trenches that one, like the one I showed you guys on my last haul. They had two of those in there, but they were of different brands, but they look exactly the same. They had polo um, hoodies, they had um, really nice coats, like they had North Face in there. They had, and that's an expensive brand, they had nice stuff in there. And I'm like, I don't even want to, you know, I wanted to go back and get more, but I was like, this is enough. <laughs> mm -hmm. Please help me. I'm rotating, or date rotating. I'm dating a retired football player and entrepreneur. I really don't want to mess this up. We've already slept together. <sighs> Did you get any money before you slept together? Did you get any commitment? Did you get any um, anything solid that you can count on? Um, my my sister married a football player, but you know, I don't know. I think it takes a lot. You know, um, because he could get that from anybody. You know what I mean? It's not, oh, you're in a relationship. Well, if you don't want to mess it up, then just act like you belong there. Act like you belong with him. Act like it's normal to you. Don't, don't be like, oh, scared and nervous to mess up around him. He's going to sense that and it's going to seem like you don't fit in that lifestyle. So, I don't know why you think you're going to mess it up. I don't see why that would be that? I bought some Ralph Lauren polo sweaters at Goodwill for three ninety nine each. Yeah. Okay. Um. So yeah. <clears throat> now I got. I have so much junk I have to put up because I have all this stuff I was hauling, and I need to put it in my closet and hang it up and ugh, find hangers. I need to buy some hangers now because I'm out of hangers. <laughs> they sell hangers at Goodwill too. Those those nice white plastic ones. I mean, I may need to go get some. Okay. So, yeah, if you're young and you don't want to dress like boring yet, take your classic cute preppy outfit and pair it with some cute jewelry, some rings, some bracelets, a cute lipstick color, cute hairdo. Um, and maybe you know a cute purse and there you have it if you look on Pinterest and you type in classy fall looks or you know classy casual fall looks you'll get an idea because all those girls on there they're young they're on Instagram they're young so they'll they'll show you exactly what to do you know 
I love looking at Instagram and uh, Pinterest for fashion ideas because it's just so easy to go shopping once you have an idea of what you want of what outfits you want to put together in your mind you know how, how it's going to look on your body type because if, if you go on Pinterest you can type in like your body type the type of style you want to see the type of clothes you want to see and it'll bring up the size per your size person with this type of clothes on so you can see kind of what you would look like in the in the items I told him what I needed he knew how much it would take okay well great <laughs> okay so I mean I think if you're dating like some I keep seeing some stuff in here if you're dating someone, they have money, da da da, you're in a relationship, if they're not paying all your bills, um, it don't matter how rich they are, if they're not paying your bills, then you might need to reevaluate that situation, you know. Or let them know that you need your bills paid. You know? See, this is the problem with dating guys who are formerly famous or football players. They think they don't have to do all that stuff for you because you should be honored because they're a famous football player or an ex-football player and they can have anyone. This is why I choose to not date people who are famous. I mean, this is why I didn't marry someone like that. I married somebody that, you know, didn't have to worry about all that with, you know, you're going to pay my bills, point blank, that's it, you know. So, didn't have to worry about that, you know. It wasn't even an issue. It's like, you know you're going to pay my bills, right? <laughs> it was obvious. So, that's what I do, you know, because I already saw my sister go through the football player stuff, and it's not fun, okay? Um, they're, um, you know, they're not, they're not faithful. Um, they, they don't think they owe you anything because they're famous, and you're lucky to be with them. They might give you a little money. They might, you know, pay something, but retired football players, entrepreneurs, Depending on what he what he earned during his time in the NFL, how much he saved, and how much his business is making, you know, he might have that house from when he was playing, but does he have money to spend? You know, if he does, great, make him spend it on you. How much do you cater to the guy's taste of looks, his fashion, preference, and clothes, what like to wear, what else? Um, for me, I don't care what he wears. I don't care what he looks like. As long as he got money and, and paying my bills and giving me money, I don't care what he wears. Like, honestly, I really don't because <laughs> it doesn't matter. You know... My husband will come with some crazy looking stuff, and I just, I won't even say that. And I'm like, ooh, that's, you know, because I know ain't no other woman going to try to take him away looking that, looking like that. So I don't care. Um, people already know what it is when they see us out anyway. It's not like they think, oh, ooh, there's a nice loving couple. And it's like, oh, I know why she with him. That's what it looks like. And I already know. And I don't care. Um... I was I was telling a story on Facebook in my Facebook group, but I was in I was in the uh, I was in Neiman's last call today at the mall. It's the store like the discount Neiman store, and I was looking at this older you know black guy. He was about my husband's age, and his wife was in there with him. She looked like somebody's grandma. Like she had gray hair, you know, a little shawl. She was kind of hunched over with her glasses, you know, looking for sales. And a little, a little bifocals. They were the same age. And I'm like, James, my husband is sure lucky. Because he got a young woman. And, you know, he's not walking around with a wife his age who looks like a grandma. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm saying my husband is very lucky. Okay? Because that would be him. Right? So, you know, he was looking. You know, he, you know, some old man look at young women. But wishing back in the day, remember, remembering... What they used to do but you know he was still taking her shopping 
you know I was like you go girl you know and she was nice you know she was looking at shoes and she was like oh these are nice shoes you know her husband just sitting there watching he probably was younger than mine so I came home and I told James James you you are so lucky he's like why what do you mean I said you didn't got so used to having a young wife I saw a guy your age in the store with his wife and she looked like a grandma <laughs> and he just started like looking weird like no you're lucky to be with me because I pay all the bills I'm like yeah we both lucky I guess <laughs> told him we were both lucky <laughs> so I'm just like I was like you know what am I gonna look like when I'm his age that's what that's what we're supposed to look like together if we were the same age I would be a grandma I would be a grandma um all my hair would be gray and I would probably have trifocals because I'm already blind I'm probably gonna need trifocals so I'm just saying you know that's why older men will do whatever you ask them because they already know they don't want to be walking around the store with grandma that's why after a certain age they get that midlife crisis and then they either trade trade their wife in for a younger version or they stay with her and they get a mistress so a lot of women don't like to hear that but it's true that's why I always say marry somebody older so you're always young to them like no matter what I'm always be young to James always always so <laughs> I will never get left for the younger model because I am the younger model. You know, if he let if he dated anybody younger than me, it would look crazy. You know what I mean? So, and he couldn't afford it because we already got all this stuff together. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, if you want to like, if you have a goal in mind, a lifestyle in mind, you know, you got to be strategic in getting it, and. Um, to secure these type of men, you gotta have a certain look, a certain dress style, and you can get it without spending a thousand dollars. Just go to Goodwill and pick you out some cute designer clothes. If you're thin, oh my God, you can just make millions of outfits and they have like Miss Me jeans, they had True Religion, they had all that stuff in there. You could, you could just clean up. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I got money. I'm not looking for the baddest chick. I'm just looking for some cooperation. Mm -hmm. Um. Y'all were silly. What if he leaves for someone your your age? Nobody my age is going to go with him, okay? Because, first of all, if he left me, I would get the house. So, what? Where are they going to live with her? Second of all, I got two kids. That's two child supports. He ain't going to have nothing for her. <laughs> so... Then what? Then he's going to have to pay for the divorce. And we've been together over 10 years, so I can get alimony. Because I don't have a job. Okay? So, he could try. I'm Like I always tell people, if he left me, I would come up. <laughs> and he knows I would come up. And I could still, and then I would replace him with somebody else who could make money too. So I'm getting his money and some new money plus my own money. So I'm getting three incomes off of three people. Myself, him, and the new dude, whoever it's going to be. So he's not going to want to see that. And all he's going to get is another woman to pay for. So that's why I don't fear him leaving me for somebody my own age. 
Plus, most women my age, they don't think like me. You know, they're gonna want him to do all this stuff that he's not gonna do. You know, they're gonna want him to do this, this, and that. He's not gonna do that. I already know what he he's gonna do. What he's not gonna do, I know all his, his bad habits and blah 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 blah, and all his weaknesses and secrets. <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, um, let me go back and read what's going on. Ew. How do you leave a poverty relationship with kids involved? Get you a sugar daddy. <laughs> Stack your money until you saved enough to leave, and then you leave. Okay? That's what I would do. Like, Seriously, I would, if I was if my if I was in this broke, poverty stricken relationship with children, I would work on myself, get cute, go to sugardaddy.com, meet some out for lunch, start getting their money, stacking it, putting it in my bank account, saving up so I can move. Then I would level up, maybe take some of that money and start a business or you know, get a job or whatever I had to do to get out of that situation. But I wouldn't stay there and ask questions. I'd be getting money, you know. Um, you're a woman. You're, you shouldn't be broke. No woman should be broke. All you got to do is smile, pretend like you want you want that man or some old dude, and they're going to give you money, okay? Mm -hmm. So, the older the man, the more money you get. That's what I'm telling you. The older the guy, the more money he's going to give you. The younger the guy, the less money he's going to get. So, that's what I'm going to tell you. Okay. What if the old dude smells? Put some Vicks Vapor Rub right here, just like I was telling y'all when I was a mortician. I kept some Vicks Vapor Rub when those bodies was stank. Just put some... Peppermint oil will work too. <laughs> mm hmm Okay. Ashley Ashley says she has to feel attracted to the man in order to be with him. I'm attracted to the money, okay? I don't care about the dude. I can, I'm but like, when you turn the lights off, everybody looks the same anyway, okay? So, for me, it wasn't about attraction. It was about money, okay? Straight up. Why? Because I've had models. I've had the pretty boys. I've had encounters with celebrities. I'm like... That don't pay the bills, okay? Money pays the bills. I've already had the attraction. It's the same when you close your eyes. Just pretend like you're with somebody that looks good, okay? For me, <clears throat> see, I've already been in love many, many times before I got married. I've already had long-term relationships. I've already done all that, like, lovey-dovey stuff. You know, I've already held hands and walked in the park and looked and said, Oh, true love, the cosmos, we're soulmates. I've already done all that, okay? After all that was done, I wanted the lifestyle, okay? Because the lifestyle and that is very rare to find together, okay? You're not going to find Prince Charming, who's a billionaire, and perfect and beautiful, and that's just going to spoil you, unless you're Barbie and perfect, and he's, that's what he's looking for, you know? So... What I'm saying is, if you don't want to work, if you don't want to, you know, get up every day and go to a nine to five, if you want to live, take care of your kids, be a housewife, sometimes your husband is just not going to be what you are super attracted to. But when he starts paying every bill, buying you nice stuff, buying you jewelry, you know, uh, paying everything for the kids, buying you a house and a car, he's going to start looking extra good every day. You know, that is what attracts me. You know, some people 
aren't attracted to guys but that are older but there's very attractive older men you just gotta find one that's bearable you know what I'm saying now I know there's some ugly gross ones but those are gonna probably pay you super good but if you want an average one that looks okay yeah you're probably gonna you're gonna probably get some money but not as much as the nasty old ones like I don't have a nasty old man like I don't but and I, I probably couldn't do that either you know what I'm saying so I got one that I could bear <laughs> he's not ugly he's just average the average looking old older black guy that's all you know um there's nothing like terribly wrong with him he, he doesn't look old so everyone thinks he's like in his 40s so <sighs> okay. Uh, 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 uh. So, ooh, I'm reading some of these comments. So, oh, someone said, Did I marry a white guy? No, my husband's black. Um, <clears throat> I think a lot of people think that I did because it's very rare that a black man would <laughs> support, pay all the bills, buy you a nice house and a car and stuff like that. It is very rare. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Yeah, he's not ugly. He looked like there's this newscaster in Houston that he looks just like everybody thinks that's him. But it's not. <laughs> <clears throat> he's like, you know, dark skin, glasses, you know, average looking. How do you both handle your arguments? We we don't argue. <clears throat> Last time we argued, if we argue, it's only about money. If we ever argue, it's about money. But it doesn't last very long. It's usually solved within 30 minutes. Um, like, <clears throat> I think the last time we argued, he gave me uh, the wrong credit card number. <laughs> and it wouldn't go through. And I was like, it's not going through. And, he, and then he had to, uh, you know, I was yelling at him. And then he gave me the right number. And then it went through. Or he said the, the bank was, I don't know. But it went through. So, that's the last time I argued with him. We don't argue. Because old, what do I have to argue with about an older uh, older guy? They don't care. They're laid back. They've been there and done that. They don't get jealous anymore. They're not check. they don't even check Facebook. You know, they're not following you. Um, they're at home on the couch watching Criminal Minds and Law and Order. Okay. So they don't worry about all of that. It's very different. <laughs> what is my husband's zodiac sign? He's a Sag. Sagittarius. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm I'm good because. I'm gonna, I'm most likely gonna be a widow, a young widow, and <clears throat> it is what it is, you know? So, it's not like I'm stuck for the rest of my life. <laughs> I'll be a rich widow. <laughs> Oh, in the group, oh my gosh, my, my girls in the group, two of them have gotten on life insurance policy since they've been in the group. <laughs> they sugar daddies put them on their life insurance. I'm like, y'all go, you know, um, one of the girls in the group got one of her sugar daddies to fund her, uh, some of her business, um, 
she gave her a large amount of money to invest into her business, you know, so now she's an entrepreneur and doing very well and da da da. Um I mean, y'all just don't know. A lot of these guys on here, the trolls, they have no idea what guys are doing for women. And these girls are not perfect. They're not Barbie. They're not a size two either. Okay. So whatever you think, unthink it because there's always some old desperate man that will pay <laughs> and give you a lot of money because if they have a lot of money, it's nothing to them. You know, um, what they want is that young person to make them feel young and exciting and, you know, spend time with them and, you know, make them feel like they're appreciated and that their life wasn't, you know, is not over yet. So they're going to pay for that. And a lot of young guys don't understand this. They don't understand why women go for older guys. First of all, they're generous, very nice, cater to you a lot, always bring you stuff, think about you. You know, um, they don't argue with you. <laughs> you know, they're not off sneaking around with, you know, anybody. And most of the time, you know, they're probably going to do something really big for you. You know, give you a, a nice house or a car or something like that. So, for me, it's a win-win. And I, I would never date anybody close to my age. I only, I don't, like when I was 22, I would not even date people under 45, ever. Like, after I said that I was only dating older men, I would only entertain older men because the young guys, they're not ready yet. They're still trying to come up, you know, they're still playing, they're still having fun. So, I wouldn't really try to, you know, be with them because they couldn't give me what I wanted. So, I mean, nothing against younger guys. I just, I couldn't date them because what I wanted they couldn't give me you know but an older guy could and he could give it to me and plus more you know so that's why I chose to go for older guys mm -hmm. um what are y'all trying to help her I don't believe in divorce I do my mom does. She, my mom, been married five, five times. <laughs> uh, uh, divorce is not okay, y'all. A lot of people are okay. Y'all need to watch. You need to watch my video called "Morals Will Keep You Broke." Morals will keep you unhappy. Morals and religion are there to keep you in place. That is what it's for. It's to keep you from becoming what you want. Okay, so I don't subscribe to any reasoning that doesn't make logical sense. You know what I mean? If you're with a broke man who can't support you and you're unhappy, but you don't believe in divorce, to me, you don't need to be complaining. You don't need to be talking about it. You just need to go shut up and stay unhappy because no matter what we say or do, you don't believe in divorce. So, go be in your unhappy situation and stop complaining about it. You can't do anything about it, so don't complain about it, you know. For me, for my mom, for anybody who's been divorced, they did something about it. And, you know, that's man's law. That's man-invented law, you know what I mean? So, they'll tell you it's religion. Because they want you to stay with them so you can't leave an upgrade on them. <laughs> because women can do that like this. You know? So they scare you. Oh, no, you can't do that. You're going to burn in hell if you leave me. Oh. Oh, well, I'd rather burn than be broke. Bye. You know? Um, but it's just not true. You know? It's just not true because it was put in place so you were, would be afraid. You know? But for me, I'm not letting any, any morals, any religion keep me from the life that I want. Okay? Because you're already in hell. You're already in hell. If you're suffering and you're broken, you can't do what you want to do. If you're not free, you're already in hell. 
go. Oh, I'm sorry that she married a broke man, but oh, it's okay if you don't believe in divorce. You just can't complain about it. Uh, maybe you can, you know, start your own business and thrive and make your own money. You know, so and do better. Mm -hmm. Oh, your husband says you can never stay home? Well, you know, that's what you married. So, I don't know. I, before I married, I made sure I was going to stay home. Before we got married, while we were dating, I said, I'm not working. I'm not working after marriage. I'm not, I'm not working while we're together either. I didn't even work when we were together. <laughs> so... You know, it was already understood. So I didn't have to do, you know, ask for permission. I told. I don't ask, I tell. It's like, no, I'm not working. Mm -hmm. And you know, even if you are working, you make the best out of your situation. Level up, you know, start your own business, save some money. I would, uh, you know, in different cultures, the women are required to do certain things. They can't do this and they can't do that. You know, their laws are very strict. Their religion is very strict, so they can't be free. You know what I'm saying? So, if they really live under that and they believe it and things like that, great. Let them live how they live. But you can't come and watch. I mean, you can come and watch these videos. And feel inspired and things like that but you can't really go and turn around and do it because you're not able to hi there's no audio on my lap sasha is that a sticker yeah oh, okay did you put your stuff on oh yeah the dryer okay mm-hmm What if you weren't working a lot before marriage and decide to be an entrepreneur and he is resistant to that change? Ask him if he's resistant to divorce. Ask him if he's resistant to child support. That's what I would do. Women, you have all the power. What are you doing? You don't ask, you tell. You know, why, what would... Be like, okay, well, you know, I want to start my own business. I want to stay home. I want to raise the kids. I want to do this, this, and that. Oh, you can't do that. Oh, okay. Really? I can't? Are you sure about that? Well, let me see. I really want to start my business. Like, this is a priority to me. I really want to start my business. Okay, let's see how I can get some extra money to start my business. So, well, I don't have to work. And I can... Okay, let's see. Um, I have two kids. You make this much money. If I take 20%, maybe 30, out of your check, plus we sell the house, I get half of that. Okay, I'll have enough money to start my business if we divorce. Or I could stay home and start my business. Which one you want to do? You know, that's what you do. You don't ask, you tell. Okay? You are a partner in a business. Marriage is a business. You are a partner. They, you, He doesn't tell you what you can and cannot do if you working. Okay? That's the beauty about it. If you're working, he don't tell you what to do. Okay? If you bring in home money and putting it in that household, he does not tell you what to do. You tell him what to do. Basically, because he needs your help. As a grown man, he needs your help. You don't ask him if you can stay home. You stay home. And if he got a problem with it, ask him if he has a problem with child support, divorce, and selling the house. Okay? That's what I say. You got a problem... You know, I, I get the money. I'll figure it out. You know I'm smart. That's what, I, that's what I'll say. I'll, you know I'm smart. I'll figure out how to get this money. <laughs> what do you mean, figure it out? Well, what do you think? The easiest way. 
Then they're going to start thinking. You make money, I'll get 20% of that if I file child support. <laughs> so, if you're working, you don't ask no man nothing. That's half your stuff, that's half your house. You can stay in that house and you don't have to go to work if you don't want to. You know, you can f figure out how to work from home. You can figure out all that kind of stuff. And you don't need his permission if you're working. Oh, but I don't want to make the household unpeaceful. I don't want him mad at me. And what? Sasha, what? If you turn it down. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, yeah. So, like I said, you don't you don't ask men for permission if you're working, because that means you're not equal. And if you're working, you are equal. Okay. He's your roommate. You don't ask your roommate if you can quit their if you can quit your job. You just quit it and let them wing it until you get one. You know. Oops. That's that's the, the tragedy of having a roommate, you know? <laughs> oh, man, my roommate lost his job this month. Man, shoot. I'm going to have to pay a whole rent. Or maybe he's going to have to, I'm going to have to sell some stuff. I don't know. I need to get some extra money somehow. You know, that's the problem with roommates. Now, if he was paying all the bills, he wouldn't have to worry about it. Now, would he? <laughs> So, thank you, um, thank you for seeing me on my channel. Okay. Um, and the, the problem with women who are super in love with their husbands and don't want to disappoint them and don't want to anger them and da 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 you know, by not speaking their voice when they're working and helping a grown man y'all got issues okay um because if he wants to be the man and tell you what to do he needs to be paying all the bills okay because he has no authority basically and it's so sad how many women go to work every day and let their man rule the household and he don't even deserve to I'm like, y'all stupid. You know, I would, y'all are so dumb. Y'all would let a man who needs you rule you. He needs your money to live his lifestyle, but you're asking him for permission. Probably use your credit to get into that house, but you need permission. I don't think so. <laughs> So, I wouldn't care what he said. I would just quit my job and be like, surprise, I quit. No more job. I guess you better start doing overtime or something. <laughs> what you gonna do, divorce me? What you gonna do? You gonna divorce me? I'll just file child support. You know, we could sell the house. I can get my half and get your half. Go our separate ways. It's going to cost you even more because you got to pay for that and the lawyers and all that. <laughs> so. Anyway. I have a lot of ladies who watch my channel that live in other parts of the world or different religions and things like that. And maybe they live vicariously through women like us that don't care and can do what we want. So I'm not going to down them, you know. I ain't going to down them. I mean, I would be watching too if I couldn't do what I wanted to do either. You know, hoping and wishing. And I would, and I, you know, a lot of women will move leave their area, leave their country to be able to do certain things, you know. But at the end of the day, if you're just watching just so 
because it's different and you can't do certain things, then whatever you get out of it, great. Whatever you feel, great, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we like women that want to have what they want in life, they don't let morals stand in their way. You know, they don't let beliefs stand in their way. They get what they want. And that's it. And then they're happy. Yes, Sasha? What? What? The TV's not working. Can you hear it on my little phone? Yeah. Okay. But, you know, it's okay. A lot of a lot of ladies are watching that can't get out of their relationship. They can't get out of their marriage. A lot of ladies are watching who were, you know, can't do anything. They just all they can do is watch. So let them watch, you know? Let them let them imagine and dream and wish. That's what she said. She says, "I wish I didn't have to work and I could stay home." So let her wish, you know. We watch a lot of times a lot of, a lot of us watch those luxury channels where women are like showing off all their designers and Chanel's and Prada and stuff like that and we're we're wishing too, okay? Well see the difference between us is we can go get it if we want if we want it to. <laughs> you know? So but still understand. Let them let them figure it out. Maybe it's it's gonna build something up in them and maybe the women in their culture or in their country are going to all start thinking, you know, and doing something about it in masses. That would be the day that I see certain cultures rise up against men who are oppressing them. I would be so happy. <laughs> be like yes mm -hmm. thank you thank you yeah I just threw you know I just threw on some clothes today and look brave or whatever and got out the house um but you know where I live I live in Houston we have so many different cultures here um so i i had a friend and she was muslim and she couldn't do hardly anything you know she couldn't do anything um and then i had a friend who was just you know they didn't care about religion and you know they had no morals and you know it's just different you can't even though they're free in America and they live on their own. It's this, like, their belief is so strong they can't do what we could do. You know what I'm saying? So, let's just let them be. Some of them do, though. Some of some of them, they don't care anymore. they just like, well, I'm here now. I might as well live like they live. But, for the most part, don't, like, if they're there, just leave them there until they figure it out themselves. That's all we could do. Yay! Okay. My kids are listening to Descendants. Okay, so, well, we got off topic of the video, but, you know, we always do that towards the end. Um, I, you know, the gym that I work at is really nice. There's like, when I go in the morning, it's all housewives and entrepreneurs who don't have a real job. <laughs> and they don't go to work. They just, you know what? They drop their kids off. They go get their Starbucks. They put, they go to the gym. They work out. They talk to their friend at the gym. And, you know, whatever. And I see all of them, you know. And that's their life. Then probably after the gym, they go home, take a shower, change, go to the mall, go shopping, go grocery shopping you know go to costco whatever and get their nails done and this is their life 
maybe they're in the PTA, some of them, some of them aren't, but, you know, that's what they wanted, that was the lifestyle they wanted, and that's what they got, and they're totally fulfilled in it, because they're happy, you know what I mean, so, if you're wanting to do that, don't feel ashamed, don't make people make you feel like, oh, you should be more than that, or you need to have goals, and that is a goal, okay, if you driving a Range Rover and don't have to go to a 9 to 5, that's a goal, okay, if you could go to uh, drop your kids off, go to Starbucks, go to the gym and have six hours plus free to do it with, with what you want until it's time to pick up your kids, that's goals, okay, Sit in rush hour traffic every day to go listen to some boss and and work hard. Drive back in another hour of rush hour traffic. Come home, cook, help your kids with their homework, and then do it all over again the next day. That's not goals, okay? So, but if you enjoy that, then great. But for most women, they want to just be free. You know, they just want to be happy. They want to be taken care of. They want their man to support them. Or they want to have their own business to where they don't have to go by someone else's schedule. And they just want to make their own schedule. Or they want to work from home. Or they want to work when they feel like it. You know what I'm saying? So, it's not about not having goals. It's about not being forced to do something that you really don't want to be doing. Right. And if like someone just said, there's so many men that try to make women feel guilty for wanting that life, then that's not the man for you. I, that As soon as a man said that to me, if they said that to me, I would say, well, then you're just not the man for me. And I would be going on. I would leave. That would be it. You know, um, because I would be an instant turn off and I would never want to sleep with him again. So... <laughs> That will be the last time. Oh, shoot. So, uh, so, yeah. So, that will be the last time they ever saw me again. And then, when, like, the funny thing is when the look on their face starts turning into, like, horror after you say, oh, well, you're not the man for me. It's hilarious because they realize it just looked cheap, broke, and said the wrong thing. And now they got to go find somebody else to start over with. <sighs> oh, thank you. Yeah, sometimes when the video gets turned off and comes back, the sound is better. I don't know why. It's, I guess I need to upgrade my phone. Huh? <laughs> Maybe I will. You know they're always going to have some Christmas special for phones. Eh. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. And you know what? Somebody was trolling me today, like on Facebook. This dude, he was like, um, because I don't know, he was trolling me about how men and a woman should build. And you, if you don't take care of yourself, no man's going to want you and you need to contribute. And I was like, Psh. you know, my husband does everything. He's like, oh, you live in Texas. Blah, 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 blah. Everything is cheap there. I said, well, then you should move here. <laughs> I was like, you might be balling too if you lived here. So he's like, he's like lived in California. And I'm like, so you struggling to pay for a house in the ghetto when you can be living in a, a mansion over here? I said, to me, you're the dumb one. <laughs> so, you know, relocation sometimes is a good move. For example, what someone pays for a, a shack in California, they could be living in a really nice house in Houston, you know. But the salary is not going to be the same as the salary would be in California. So you're still kind of going to be on the same level anyway. But if you had a house and you sold it, that money is still the same. So when you came here, you could get the nice house at least. You know, <laughs> or any part of Texas, 
you know, or any any state that's not where like major, you know, Hollywood and New York and stuff like that. You can not in the big towns, you know, you can you can live grand, okay? Um, in some parts of Texas, not not where I live, and there's even cheaper places. Like there was a house that would cost a million dollars that was like um what my house cost. Like um it had everything, but it was in the country. And I'm like, I don't wanna live in a country. But it was it was probably worth in California, probably worth five million. Here it would be worth what my house is worth in the country. You know, it was super cheap. And I'm like, see, I would move to the country for that house, but then I, where would I go? How would I go shopping? You know, I'd have to like order stuff online. <laughs> so, you know, location is it, you know, it, and when you live somewhere and everybody or most people, you know, have a good career, good job, nice house, people are more generous. You know, when everybody's struggling and everybody's, you know, looking for jobs and work is scarce, ain't nobody paying. So it's best to find a place where a lot of people are thriving, you know, where there's an industry. Like Texas has the oil and gas industry. Um, so you got to have a lot of money there. I know California has the entertainment, the Silicon Valley, the, you know, all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of money there. New York has the business, the real estate, you know, the stock market. Yeah. So Florida has like the tourists and all that kind of stuff. You know, Miami, Disney World. So you're going to have that. Okay. Houston, like I said, oil and gas, NASA, you know, science, all that kind of stuff. So you're going to have money in those areas. But, you know... Like I said, Texas is probably going to be your best bet to get a very nice lifestyle for less. Like I said, so, you know, I've lived here all my life, so I don't know any different, you know. But, so if my husband and I lived in California, they would probably pay him a lot more. And we would still live the same lifestyle, but, you know... It would just be on the California scale. So what what they pay him in Texas is probably a lot different than what they would pay him in California. You know what I mean? So you got to kind of weigh out all of that before you understand like how, how it all works. Mm -mm -mm. Um... For real, I can't stand me and I feel asexual sometimes. <laughs> yep. I think I think a lot of women are starting to feel asexual because the masculine qualities in men are less and less. So there's less to be attracted to. You know what I mean? Um <clears throat> So if the woman is not attracted to feminine traits, then she will probably be more asexual when it comes to men with a lot of, of feminine traits. She's just going to be like, ugh, they don't, ugh, no. You know, so that's why it's important. Like you see a pretty face, you see a cute guy, right? But as soon as they open their mouth and ask you to pay half, they just start looking like a toad, right? Because that's a feminine quality. You are, you are unattracted to them at that point. It's a turn off because that is a feminine quality. To need to be provided for. That is a feminine quality. So when your man that you're dating who's super cute, looks like a model, asks you to pay for half of the dinner, all of a sudden he starts looking like, you know, jacked up. <clears throat> So, you know, I don't care how good they look. As soon as they ask you to pay for something, they start, they go from a 10 to a negative, negative 10, you know, on my, on my scale. It's like, oh, really? Did you just ask me to pay for something? 
I, then I secretly think they're gay or broke and I will never call ever again after that. And it was like, ugh. I will go in the bathroom <clears throat> and almost throw up actually because it's just a, that's how sick it is. <laughs> Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> a, a, a lot of people think they're asexual because they're just so turned off by the opposite sex these days because they're not very masculine the same with men who aren't who feel asexual because the a lot of women are super masculine or they feel asexual towards those type of women you know so just like we feel attracted to certain type of men, but we don't feel attracted to certain type of men, it's the same thing. It has nothing to do with looks. It has how they treat you and what they'll do for you, you know? Mm -hmm. Modern day men are really women and <laughs> with penises. Um... Yeah, for me, if I truly had to date in today's society, oh my God, I would probably make a grown man cry. I'm serious. Like I would literally make him cry. He would be crying at dinner because I would I would sit here and talk to him just like I'm talking to y'all in front of everybody. I'm like, are you seriously asking me to pay? What's wrong? Are you handicapped? Do you get a check? Are you on disability? You know, you seriously need me to help you pay for a date you asked me out on. Um, I'm going to have to decline on that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> do you need gas money to get home too? I'm going I'm to embarrass them. It's like, I'm not your mother and I'm not your aunt and I'm not your big sister. You're a grown man. Handle it. <laughs> That's what I'm going to tell him. Oh, you're just a gold digger. Da, da, da. No, you just can't afford to date, sir. Don't ask people out that you can't afford to pay for. Okay. <laughs> just, you know, luckily, guys un will know. Guys know the type of woman that will not pay. They won't even try to make you pay. Even if they make other girls pay. If you carry yourself a certain way, dress a certain way, act a certain way, they won't ask you to pay because they already know that you won't. Now, the girls that they do ask to pay are too nice. You know, text back on the first two seconds, answer every call, you know, probably chase them. They know that they can get that girl to pay. The other girl, they won't ask her to pay because they already know the situation. So, I hate when they ask you out on an expensive date, but you can see that unless you give them sex, they are giving up after that try. Mm -mm. That's why you date older men, because they don't expect that. Old guys, old, old guys, they don't expect sex. They just want to be seen out public with something young instead of grandma you know what I'm saying so that's what I say if, if they're rushing into sex that means they're probably with the old lady if they're older and they can't get none and it's been years since they had some you know that's why they're rushing but if they're young it's because they already had that in mind they already knew what they were dating you for it wasn't for marriage it wasn't for no long-term relationship it was to sleep with you so you already know that going into a date. So that's why you get all you can on the first date. Gifts, good food, wine, five-star restaurant. Get all of it. Pretend you're going to sleep with them. Make them buy you some wine and make them buy you, you know, anything you want on the menu. Make them bring you a gift. Pretend like you're going to give it to them. And then say, oh, no, I don't do that unless I'm in a serious relationship. Oh, well, we can be in a relationship because, you know, man will tell you whatever you need to hear to get it. Say, oh, well, we can be in a relationship. Then you say, oh, well, 
you know, if I'm in a relationship, you know, I, I, I would need you to pay all my bills. You know, if I'm going to be in a relationship exclusive, cutting myself off, you know, I'm going to need you to pay my bills. <laughs> then, then they give up and they leave and they're not mad. They're like, they think they escaped you. <laughs> so, and then some of them will actually give you some money and pay your bills. <laughs> then you got, then you be like, uh oh. Then you think about, oh, I don't have to work anymore. Basically. Mm hmm. Wrote an article on guys asking you to go Dutch. Oh, somebody wrote an article. That's not a man. I'll be like, I'm, no. I, Mm -hmm. If somebody asked me to go Dutch, I wouldn't even respond to that. I would just delete block. Mm -hmm. So, do you, oh, Kenny, you want to know what my husband does? He works in IT. He's technical. He's a, he's a geek. He works in, um, uh, a pipeline company um, doing all their tech and whatever but like I said Houston oil and gas pipeline that's big industry so yes but anything techno technical IT whatever it's gonna pay good if you've been there for years you know what I'm saying he's been he's he's he was the type of nerd that was in IT during the 80s, okay? When it first started, you know? So, he got all of that, okay? <laughs> he builds systems and all that kind of stuff. Management systems, software, blah, blah, blah. So he's like, he's well paid, well compensated for his experience. <laughs> Okay. Yep. And and the thing is like James don't make millions of dollars, okay? But he pays everything. That's the difference. You can be dating a millionaire who won't give you no money and you got to pay your own bills, you know, and live in your mama's house or your apartment while he lives in a nice house that you can come and visit and you can ride his nice car, but he will never give you a bunch of money. You know, you can date a millionaire, you can date a famous person, you can date an ex-athlete, you can date a rapper, but unless they're paying all your bills, you know, getting you houses and cars and funding your lifestyle, what's the difference, you know? Someone who makes a lot less money than them is, you know, providing for someone fully. It just depends on how generous they are with their money. You know, so that's my take on it. You know, I didn't, I didn't need James to be a millionaire in order to get him to fully provide for me. Mm -hmm. So my videos are not about going to get a millionaire or a billionaire. It's about getting a man who can fully provide for you and give you the life that you want. Different states require different amounts of money different um you know backgrounds require different rules so make it work for you you know i made it work for me i already knew what i want going in i i said i don't want to work i want to be a housewife and that's what i did um and then you know then i have my own little side businesses and things i do online and channel youtube channels so i am doing something you know i am doing something but the main stuff, I don't have to worry about. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah, remember, always keep 
an open mind when it comes to your future okay i know a lot of young girls will say oh i could never date an older guy or oh i could never just do date for money it has to be for love okay after you fall in love about two three times and get your heart broke you're gonna be looking for the money after that i promise you <laughs> you're gonna be like where's the money <laughs> where's the money i'm done So, to me, it's easier to find money than find love. I promise you. You're going to spend, it's, it's easier to find money than it is to find real love from a man. You know? It's easier to find lifestyle. It's easier to find money. But so many women sacrifice looking in a desert to find love go and go broke, get old, work themselves to death looking for love. Okay, um, that's what I'm saying. Money and lifestyle is a hundred times easier to find than love. <laughs> Somebody said an old married CEO wants to take her to Vegas twice a month. With sex for 5k a month and he's old and fat and married what would you what should you do get real drunk every time you will drink vodka you won't remember nothing <laughs> and you will never have to work and you get to go to Vegas and you can start your own business and then you can start making money and then you can cut him off you know use that money to build yourself um, that's what I said. And if he's that old, he ain't gonna be trying to do nothing for that long anyway. You know, he'll probably be done after two seconds. <laughs> okay. And he's fat too. Make him do all the work. He's going to be done in two seconds. <laughs> Carry some sleeping pills and put them in your drinks. Oops. You must have been real tired, baby. You fell asleep last night. Oh, well. <laughs> Where's my money? So, <laughs> just remember... You know, you have all the power. If he's if he's willing to give you all that money and all you got to do is go to Vegas with him twice a month, slip him some sleeping pills, uh, make him fall asleep, you good. Mm -hmm. Slip him some night quill. Right? Give him some... Uh, <laughs> yeah, he'll be gone. I'm like, oh, I fell asleep. I'm so sorry. And then before he wakes up, be dressed, take a shower, be dressed and ready to go eat breakfast. You know he gonna want to eat if you if you fat. You be like, oh, let's go eat. They got a buffet. Distract them with food. You know. Then he'd be like, oh yeah, let's go. <laughs> So, I would go at least two times and you get $10,000. If you can't do it after two times, take that $10,000, invest it, start you a, a cheap online business or uh, whatever. Maybe, I, I would actually go until I got 100000 I mean, you think about this. Do the math. 5000 a month. How long would it take you? It would take you 20 months. That's like two years you could have $100,000. I'm going. <laughs> okay? I just drink, real, get real drunk, keep sleeping pills on me, and keep getting $5,000 every month. 5000 you know. I would, I would have a good savings. 
you're gonna, you know, <laughs> you'll be used to them by then. Nobody else will know. You know. So you can you can probably get more than five thousand. You know, the longer you're with him, you're like, I need some more money. This ain't enough. <laughs> he probably buy you a car and everything, you know. So I would take that deal. I'm sorry. I don't care. It's money is, you know, if you're if you don't want to work, there's your answer. And once you start your business, once you save your money, then you can get rid of them and be free on your own. Just use them to come up and then be done. <laughs> I mean, guys do it to women all the time. They go get some ugly ratchet chick that they don't really want. Live with them. Pretend that they're in love. And until so they save up and get their little nice sports car and find him a little side chick. You know, save up some money, get their own apartment level up save all their money because you paying all the rent and then they just gonna leave anyway so you might as well go do it to somebody who is wanting to do it for you you know it's like here i know i'm gross i know i'm ugly that's why i'm paying you you know <laughs> mm-hmm exactly So that's what I'm saying. Like, a lot of women have this fairy tale in their mind. Like, oh, I'm gonna find Prince Charming, perfect rich man. Da da da. Yeah, right. They're already taken. Okay. Or they're gay. So go get the ugly rich guy that's gonna hand you money just for being you. Okay. Invest that into yourself. Start you a business. Buy you a nice car. Get you a house. You know. Build yourself up. Pay off all your debts get out of you know debt permanently level up you know and when you're done with them then you can go about dating guys your own age but you probably not gonna like it because they're not gonna give you anything <laughs> yay okay Um, so I'm trying to read these. You talk about using these men. What about, I don't believe in karma because I don't feel guilty about it. So I won't attract karma to me. If I, karma only happens if you feel guilty about something because you're vibrating on a frequency of guilt and that you deserve a punishment. I don't think I'm guilty. I think. I'm supposed to do this. They want to give it to you. You know, they come to you. They're like, hey, I know I'm ugly old. Can I be with you? I will pay. What's so bad about that? <laughs> they didn't ask you to marry them, did they? <laughs> they're, they're the one that's married and, you know, doing wrong. You're just in it to win it. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't I don't believe in none of that karma stuff because If karma was real I, I said this in some of my old videos if karma was real. Don't you think all the people that deserved, you know Real karma would have gotten it by now It's only real if you attract it to you by feeling guilty most people that are truly evil, they don't feel guilty about what they did. You know, that's why nothing bad happens to them. <laughs> okay. They're like, oh, well. Um, some of these sugar babies try to pay at the end of the month. Nope. Get your money on the first before anything. <laughs> Or else cancel it. Like, nope, sorry. You know, have a direct deposit right into your account on the same day every month. Mm -hmm. That's 
So I would ask, look, I need this deposit every week or every month in my account or I can't come see you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but yeah, this video was originally about Goodwill Hall. <laughs> if y'all missed that, wait till the vid video finished uploading and I got some like designer cute stuff from the thrift store. I was trying to show you guys that you could dress cute without spending a bunch of money until you found a sugar daddy at least. <laughs> Yes, money. Mm hmm So, that's uh, so why I, I, I did a video. It's like, um, morals will keep you in being a pick-me, okay? Morals will keep you being a pick-me chick, okay? Ask any pick-me chick what they believe in. They're going to tell you a bunch of stuff that kept them back, you know? A bunch of stuff that kept them broke with bad men thinking this and that. You know, once you get rid of those morals that were put in place by men to keep you where you are, then you will level up. Then you will have that confidence to go get what you want from guys. Men will give you stuff, you know. You got to get rid of that mindset, though. It's a pick-me mindset, you know. It's, a, it's holding you back. Mm-hmm. So, make sure that, you know, if you're trying to switch, switch it up and, you know, level up, you're going to have to leave some of those morals behind you because those is what were keeping you down. Those were keeping you down. You know, you can still maintain morals, but you don't, not all of them, because not all of them are going to help you get to the next level. They're going to keep you down. So you, you got to be careful with that, you know. Oh, I can't do that because of this. Oh, I can't do that because of that. No, you're trapping yourself now, you know. You're putting that handcuffs on yourself now. Not No man is holding you back. No broke man is holding you back. Your beliefs and your thinking is holding you back now if you're letting morals get in your way. That's why I always say, are those morals benefiting you? Because if they're not, why do you have them? Right? Mm -hmm. So, leave the morals to the people that enforce them. Okay? They're more valuable to them than they are to you. Because the people that enforce the morals and who told you the morals gain power. But you don't. So if you're not an enforcer of rules, then you don't benefit from them. You understand? You only get held in a certain place for so long until you figured out until you figure out that these morals are to keep me here rather than expanding and doing well you know so I don't follow morals if they don't make sense to me <laughs> okay so y'all what time is this getting late oh my gosh it's late so I gotta go well, thank y'all for being on here with me. I will see y'all on the next video. Um. <laughs> Make sure. <laughs> I'm trying to read some of these last ones. Oh, you know, all ladies don't have to agree with this channel, you know. But. Let's just say it's a lot of people's lives have totally changed and now they're getting exactly what they want in life, you know, by changing the way that they think. That's all they have to do. They just change the way they think, had some self-esteem, you know, 
maybe upgraded their looks and that's about it that's all it took now you have women that were dating broke men a, a year ago now they're getting um you know deposits from sugar daddies for like ten thousand dollars you know a month that's that's how fast your life can change they don't have to work you know um they're hanging around millionaires stuff like that you know and probably going to end up dating or marrying somebody with way more money than I do, you know, than I have. So it's all about how, what you make it. It's, life is all about what you make it. You know, I'm very, um, I'm very adamant about helping people level up. It doesn't matter where you start. As long as you keep going and level up and do something better with your life, you know, you, if you're sitting there complaining about something, but don't do anything about it and won't do anything about it, then you can't complain, you know? If you're going to sit and complain, you can use that time to actually do something about it. So if you're not doing something about it, and you don't complain about it. Level up and get what you deserve, you know? Like I said, women, if you work, don't ask your man for permission for nothing, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, y'all. I'm out. See y'all later.